Hello, I'm Eric Check, owner of the Ananda Apothecary, coming to you from the Ananda Apothecary. Uh, here today to talk to you about CO2 extracts. Right now we have a uh, store-wide CO2 extract sale going on. There's 20% off all, all our CO2 extracts. Uh, and I think you'll get by the end of this video uh, why you might want to try some of those out. So let's start with what's the difference between an essential oil and a CO2 extract? Um, it turns out technically the word essential oil means an oil that's been extracted only via steam distillation, hydro distillation, using water, uh, or cold pressed from the rinds of a fruit. So bergamot, uh, lime, uh, grapefruit, that kind of thing. CO2 extract uh, is um, extracted via pressurized liquid carbon dioxide. So let's go over the processes a little bit. Um, when you're making an essential oil, uh, you could have a giant vat of plant material and be boiling water from underneath that and the steam will pass through the plant material and it will capture certain molecules and with it, uh, the water is sent through a condensing tube or pipe um, and cooled to a point where it becomes liquid again. So the steam becomes liquid uh, and this is, gets into its own container. Uh, and on the top of this water, um, which was the steam, is floats your essential oil. So it's a hydrosol actually of the plant there, um, which is mostly water and then the essential oil. And these two are separated off to offer you just the essential oil. CO2 extracts are made really in a similar manner, but they're using CO2 instead of water to extract what the oily plants, part of the plants. Um, carbon dioxide, again, I had said when uh, it can be pressurized to about 10,000 PSI, more or less, uh, and cooled, so this process happens at a relatively cool process. It's actually, I think it would still be considered raw um, by some folks. Uh, it's, um, uh, we could use frankincense for an example here because I've got a couple of notes on frankincense. Um, frankincense, our frankincense sacred is made via hydro distillation. So it's like steam distillation, except it's a little bit different in that they're boiling the plant material, uh, the resin in water, capturing the steam and doing the separation as I said. Uh, the CO2 extract of frankincense is made in a similar manner, except pressurized liquid carbon dioxide is moved through the plant material. Once the, we've extracted everything that the CO2 is going to extract, it can't really be overdone, um, they release the carbon dioxide, and what's left is the, uh, is the oil, is the CO2 extract of the frankincense. Frankincense is, uh, it was one of the first uh, extracts, CO2 extracts, to be accepted by the aromatherapy community as at least as, if not more potentially therapeutic than its steam distillate cousin. Um, I have a couple pictures to show you and explain a little bit what's happening. So this is the steam distillate GCMS report of frankincense. Uh, I believe this tall peak here is alpha piney. Um, and you'll see that you know, most of the weight here is, is on the smaller end molecules. So the smaller molecules are, will be towards the left, larger molecules will be to, towards the right. Um, and more of the weight here is, is on the left. What happens with the CO2 extract is it tends to pull out larger molecules than are found, um, larger fat-friendly molecules, they say, than are found in the steam distillate. Um, so you can actually smell the difference between these two uh, very distinctly in that the steam distilled has, uh, it's a little higher noted. Um, it's, it's beautiful and complex, but it's, it's, it's more of a, a middle to high note uh, where the CO2 extract is more of a middle note. Um, you can really smell those woody, earthy components that didn't make it into the steam distillation. Now, it's important to note that not all steam, or it's not all oils are better made via CO2 extraction. There's really not that many um, relative to how many are made via steam distillation. So for example, my favorite personal essential oil 
as helichrysum essential oil. They don't make a CO2. Why? Because uh, carbon dioxide extraction doesn't bring off any more constituents or any more important therapeutic constituents or even aromatic constituents than the steam distillates. Um, so steam distilled frankincense or helichrysum is still the go-to helichrysum. Um, many oils are in fact quite similar, uh, or at least one that I know of. Um, if uh, cinnamon is uh, made via CO2 extraction or steam distillation, um, they, they're aromatically and chemically quite similar. The only reason we offer CO2s of cinnamon is because it's actually more efficient. So more of the, um, the cinnamon essential oil is brought into uh, the CO2 extract um, than if only using steam. So more of the oil is extracted. So um, other benefits of CO2s and my, why you might want to use CO2s. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about skincare and CO2s. Now, my favorite skincare blends include several um, uh, CO2 extracts. Um, this is one, for example, um, rose hip seed oil. It's a carrier oil, a cold press carrier oil, not a CO2, that was uh, researched in the 80s for its therapeutic benefits for the skin, reducing wrinkles and fine lines. Um, this is a rose hip total CO2. So it's the entire rose hip itself, not just the seeds, uh, where the CO2 has been passed through and all the lipid friendly molecules have been collected. And you can see it's much darker. It's got a much greater array of phytonutrients um, than just the cold pressed seed oil. And rose hip does not come in a steam distilled essential oil. Uh, all these, all these um, constituents wouldn't be captured by a steam distillate, but they are by a C2 distillate. Uh, ginger. Ginger's a lovely oil. Uh, spice oils in general do very well from the CO2 uh, extraction process. And that's just magnificent. It's like smelling a freshly cut open ginger root, just raw right there. Um, and the difference being is that again it's bringing in a few more heavier constituents um, via the uh, CO2 extraction process and it's happening at a cold temperature too so um, while the the steam distilled ginger certainly has its place in aromatherapy uh, if you're looking to add this aroma of ginger or get some uh, particular therapeutic values of ginger uh, the CO2 extract is really worth uh, having a look at um, again, I've got the frankincense here. Uh, I discussed that a bit already. Um, again, my favorite frankincenses are, in fact, we have a blend uh, available of CO2 Carteri and CO2 Serrata frankincense species. One's from India, one's from Somalia. They smell really completely different. One's got this smoky, beautiful, earthy note to it, and the other one's citrusy and woody and um, and together they just create this work of aromatic art, I believe. Um, so lastly, to show you, we've got uh, CO2 and hemp essential oil from the very same plant. Um, excuse me, CO2 extract and essential oil from the very same plant, both from the hemp plant. This is hemp essential oil. Uh, you can see it's much less viscous than the CO2. Um, it is completely a chemically different animal. It smells like fresh green plant here. This is a really wonderful hemp essential oil. Um, and this is the CO2 extract of hemp. So it's primarily CBD here um, with an array of other cannabinoids, uh, but very few of the terpene molecules that are in the essential oil uh, making the CO2 extract. So there is a place for both, absolutely. Like in our, C in our CBD formulas, we actually combine both of these because we, we really believe in the therapeutic properties of both of them. And your body works synergistically actually with both of these. So uh, it's, uh, again, it's not that one process is better than the other. We've tried to do our best 
to make available where CO2s really are the best for a particular plant. We make the CO2s available where it depends on your application. Uh, we make both the CO2 extract and the steam distillation available. Um, and when steam distilled is the way to go, uh, absolutely, uh, that's what you'll find at Ananda. So um, I'm hoping I've uh, been able to teach you something. And uh, thank you very much for listening.